I asked for the tea and you guys delivered. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today, I am so excited. I've never done a video like this. I can't believe I've never done a video like this. Today, I'm gonna to be acting to your controversial book opinions. Number one, please judge me. Number two, please hate me. Cause number three, I love it. And I asked you guys to make them as scalding with the tea as you guys could. And I don't really know, I, listen, you've sent a lot in. There is a lot here. I'm not gonna be able to react to all of these. <laughs> so we're just gonna scroll randomly. But listen, I've tried not to look at them so we get my actual reaction. But before we get into the video, I wanna thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Boxu. So I've spoken about Boxu lots. They are a Japanese snack subscription. Every month you get a box, ta-da! And it has a theme and there are just so many snacks in this box. I don't think you guys can understand how much is in this box. And it's just full of cool Japanese snacks. They are all sourced locally in Japan with like local vendors and family businesses. The culture guide shows you exactly where all of the different snacks come from in Japan. And something that's really great is that you can use my code MEGWITHBOOKS for 10% off your snack subscription. I said this in my last video, but I really feel like Boksu is like a great gift to give to someone who loves Japanese culture or travel in general or food. Like there's always so much new stuff to explore and I've really enjoyed like exploring snacks that like are so like different and interesting. These are blueberry gummies. How cute! You can't tell me that's not so cute. And if you were to gift this to someone in your life, not only would you be gifting them Boxu, but you would be gifting them a chance to go to Japan, which is so exciting. So Boxu are running this competition. We'll get free tickets to travel to Japan. All you need to do is be a subscriber by December 31st. I will leave all the information, all the terms and conditions down below but it's so cool that like not only could you get boxy for them like you could get them tickets to japan japan has always been one of mine and tom's dream holidays for like when we're rich like that's like in a couple well, in a couple years i'm not gonna be rich in a couple years but like that is not in our budget right now <laughs> but it's definitely a dream like our, probably our dream place to go together um so yeah i'd really recommend picking boxy up and trying out all these snacks okay so let's get into the controversial opinions i genuinely don't know where to start <laughs> Right, let's get to work. Wait, I just saw one at the beginning and then one at the top. <laughs> we have one person saying middle grade is better than YA and then I scroll to the top and Gavin says middle grade is better than any other age range. Okay, so here's the thing. I would say, <laughs> I don't read a ton of middle grade. I've read a few bits, but I don't read a ton. Middle grade is very like consistent in its quality, right? I feel like YA an adult, you get some absolute howlers published, like awful, like bad books. But I don't feel like that's the same with middle grade. I feel like middle grade has the highest standard out of all of the age ranges. Also, I feel like it has less drama. YA book Twitter authors have so much drama. There's so much going on. Whereas I feel like middle grade authors just like sit like off to the side. They're just like, we're just cute. We're just like writing books for kids. We have no drama. Oh my God. I flipping hate bookmarks with tassels or charms. I just want a plain... What? <laughs> what the fuck? I love when a bookmark has a tassel. Now here's the thing. Here's a, I will agree that I hate when they're made shittily and the tassel breaks in like two seconds. You know when they just fall apart, like the tassel just falls apart? Like then don't have it there. But if a tassel is made well, I love, I don't have enough bookmarks with tassels. I love that personally. I can't agree. But I will agree that often they are not made well and that annoys me because then they're gone and what was the point of that being there? I also love metal bookmarks. Metal bookmarks are my preference, but I've lost my favorite one. I have a fairy elite one that's like, it was gold and bronzy I can't I think it was in the law box the, the box that law was in and I've lost it it's like down my sofa somewhere I know I lost it there but I can't find it and it, I'm very sad about it Jane Austen is overrated I said what I said no <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is not correct Jane Austen is my home girl. I love Jane Austen. Listen, I haven't read a lot. I have only read Pride and Prejudice back in the day and Persuasion. I own I own um, these gorgeous editions. I love these editions. I think they're so cute. So I'm very excited to read more Jane Austen. Now, when that is gonna happen, I don't really know. Um, 
I disagree. I feel like Jane Austen was like a bit of a revolutionary at her time. I feel like she just like had this je ne sais quoi about her. And I love, listen, Pride and Prejudice. I'm watching the 1995 TV version of Pride and Prejudice with my patrons. We're doing a watch along and we watched the first two episodes the other night. And I just like the way that Mr. Darcy, him as a character, I just, listen. I just love him. I want to fuck you the minute I saw you. Oh, I'm sorry. I love him. And it's so funny. Like, I feel like Jane Austen's classics are funnier than other classics. Like, she has a great sense of humor. And I feel like she wrote a love story and made it popular at a time that it wasn't necessarily, like, the thing, you know? Well, then, to be fair, women authors were... Listen, I did a whole course on this. Writing a book was a woman's thing. And then they got turfed out and all the men, like, Charles Dickens came in and women couldn't write for ages. So that's, like, tragic. But listen, I love Jane Austen. People should not be expected to read classics, person with an English degree. Yes, I feel like, I've seen this on Twitter recently as well, like someone having a go at people for like all reading YA, right? And like, let people read what they fucking want. Who gives a fuck? That was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have not read a classic this whole year. I've read classics in the past and I enjoy them. I own quite a few, but I have not read a classic this year. And do you know what? That's okay. Who cares? Like at the end of the day, they're just books. And I feel like particularly within some sections of book Twitter or the book community, there is this like, people look down on people who only read YA. You're an adult who reads YA. Like, who cares? Do you know what I mean? Like, life is too short. I feel like sometimes, I don't know if this is controversial, I don't think it is, but I feel like sometimes the book community can be like so up in people's lives. Like, who cares? <laughs> Like, focus on you. Do you know what I mean? That's why I get annoyed sometimes when people care about what, like, maybe a particular booktuber is doing and take so much outrage at, like, something a booktuber is just doing going about their day-to-day -day life. I'm like, why do you care? Why do you care? So let people read what they want. If people want to read, like, YA, middle grade, graphic, only want to read graphic novels, only want to read comics, like, who cares? People are reading. You know what I mean? Oh, this is a good one. Miss me with books of 500 plus pages. It takes a lot more skill for a writer to distill a story into 200 pages. I completely uh, agree. Quite often, I feel like those longer books are just so like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like indulgent. They're so self-indulgent, right? Like long books. They didn't need to be long. Where is, okay, it's here. Can you see it? I don't want to like take it out and mess up all of my shelves. But The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Here's the thing, I enjoyed the book. I gave it four stars. I just dropped my phone. And we all know of my love of the secret history. However, The Goldfinch, self-indulgent. It did not need to be that long. Edit. Like, that you have an editor for a reason, edit your book. You are not so important that you need another 100, 200 pages in your book. Good God, get a grip, girl. So I agree. I think some of the best books I've read are like, in that, I like to read a lot of books in the kind of 200 to 300 page mark. They're quick, they get the job done, they tell a story, and they're amazing. Now here's the thing, sometimes I do love a longer book. Oh my god, we've got two here about where the crawdad sing being hot trash. <laughs> I haven't publicly announced this yet. I'm saving it for when I next do a big unhaul video. But I am unhauling slash have unhauled where the crawdads sing. Sorry to everyone who is so excited for me to read it, but I'm not reading a murderer's book. No way, no ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> If you don't know, the the author of Where the Crawdads Sing, like, murdered people. Murdered people in Africa, like, thinking that she was on this, like, human crusade. And, like, everyone just kind of, like, accepts it and she never got in trouble for it. Like, what the fuck? So, I'm not reading that. <laughs> Dog earing a page is my preferred bookmark. Now, here's the thing. I don't think that's necessarily controversial. Before I had my booktube channel, I, I dogged everything. I dog it everything. I had never used a bookmark. Now I'm pretentious and like I have to use a bookmark. When my mum borrows a book, I make her use a bookmark. <laughs> I don't let her dog in my books. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. But I feel like I've been conditioned to think that way by the book community. So I completely think that dog gearing is valid, but I wouldn't let people do it. To my books. We've got multiple The Secret History slanders in the chat. I didn't like The Secret History. The Secret History was just boring and dragged for 600 plus pages. Okay, in this case, I don't agree. 
I do not agree. I need to reread The Secret History because I haven't read it in years and years. But that book, although it is long, I feel like everything is necessary in that book. That book was the book that got me back into reading. I don't know if everyone knows this, but like I stopped reading for a couple years when I was like 15, 16. I think I read that at the start of 2019. So I had not read for years before it. And I read that book in a couple of days and I fell in love with it. And then from then on, I just went on to read like, I think 80 books that year. So I hold a lot of love and appreciation for The Secret History. I just think it is so well written. I think it's amazing. So I will not take any secrets to slander. However, I do recognize that I've read a lot since then and my tastes may have evolved or changed. Or I've, I've read a lot so I have a higher standard I think now. So I do need to reread it but I'm kind of scared. Like let's just leave her there and not talk about it for a while. Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo is horrendous. Could not be me. Could not be me saying that. Could not be me. You're wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> this is totally unacceptable. I'm on my way. People in the community always say they're reading romance when it's just literal porn. Okay, here's the thing. I kind of agree with this. Like, in my brain, smut is smut. Romance is romance. I wouldn't call smut romance but i don't know if that's just from like tumblr days <laughs> so yeah i think i would agree with that i find it confusing when we're just branding everything romance when i feel like they're separate things romance for me is like the relationship story it can be smutty like for example the brown sisters series this is, a, this is a romance but it's you know it has like sex scenes in it but if it's literally just sex like that's all the book is that's smut to me six of crows was shit No. However, I will give, I will give one of my controversial opinions. The Shadow and Bone show wasn't very good. That's disgusting. I'm blocking you. How do I block somebody on this thing? This is gonna be fun. I haven't finished it. I only watched like the first four episodes. It was cringy as fuck. I'm sorry. It was cringy. Uh, here's the thing. I quite liked the Six of Crows storyline. They were good. But and I did, it's not just because I didn't like Shadow and Bone as a trilogy. I didn't. Do I say this? I didn't like, I personally, <laughs> I personally didn't like the actress who played Alina. I thought she was cringy. That is that an unpopular opinion? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So that's one unpopular opinion. I've seen quite a few people saying that the Song of Achilles is awful. Like, okay. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say that. I haven't read it. And to be honest, I haven't had the greatest interest in reading it. Like, it's not a book I've put on my want to read or anything. I own Cersei and I think in my brain, I'm like, I'm just not gonna buy another book by the author until I've read Cersei and like know if I like their writing. So I'm surprised to see so many people on here saying that it's shit. I never heard that opinion. How interesting. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, this is gonna be what makes me check out. This is gonna be what makes me quit Booktube. This is gonna be what makes me deactivate my channel. Sprayed pages look so ugly. Yeah. I was angry. I was angry. <laughs> Genuinely, who hurt you? Genuinely, who made you think that? What made you? What? How could anyone think that? How could anyone think that? How? I'm sorry. I There's never been more of a wrong opinion in the history of controversial opinions. Exhibit A, right here, next to me. Excuse me? Excuse me? You're telling me that looks ugly. You're actually saying with your chest that that looks ugly. Exhibit B. Exhibit B. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Look how cute we are. Look how cute... It's just, just very incorrect. Just very wrong. I'm sorry. This is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Hardbacks are not the one. Just heavy, expensive shit only fantasy readers enjoy. Okay. Oh, creaky. I disagree. <laughs> I love hardbacks. I prefer how they look on my shelves. I prefer how hardbacks look. I don't know, but I feel like actually... Since I've put all my paperbacks together on my, you can't see, but on my fancy shelf at the top, it's all paperbacks. I'm starting to appreciate them more, but I do love hardbacks. However, one of my opinions is hardbacks should all be the same height. I don't like variations. I don't like short, like, come on now. I actually quite like them 
as a book, like as an individual book, but for shelf purposes, I want them all to be the same height. Some people are just way too precious about the way their books look. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> for what? I'm you. I've started to, to become this, and listen, I don't wanna be. But also like, as a booktuber, I care more about like my shelves and stuff than I would if I didn't make videos. Like I don't think I would give a fuck if I didn't make videos, but because I do, I feel like there's more of an expectation on me and like, yeah, like more of an expectation. However, I only really care about my hardbacks because they're expensive. Like paperbacks, my mom can do anything with them. But with my hardbacks, I'm like, take good care. Especially like special edition hardbacks or new release hardbacks. That's the only time I really care about how they look. A lot of my paperbacks kind of look like shit and I don't mind that. So I think I'm only precious around things that have cost me a lot of money because I want to keep them cute, essentially, because I've spent a lot of money on them. Shanice says the love hypothesis is overhyped. Here's the thing, when I read it and gave it five stars, there was like rumblings of hype, but the, the hype hadn't truly set in yet. Do I love it? Yes. Is it the best romance book I've ever read? Yes. I feel like it's not overhyped, but it's just like ridiculously hyped. Like everyone is talking about it, but it's amazing. Like it was five stars. One of the best books I've read this year. One of the best romances I've ever read. I know not everyone agrees, but I think I'm also a sucker for Grump Sunshine. I think you have to be a sucker for Grump Sunshine. Hence why I love Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy is the blueprint. He is the blueprint of everything I want in life. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of Sally Rooney's books. I tried a few and they're just meh. I feel like more people have said shit about Sally Rooney as well, which I endorse. No, okay, not Sally Rooney as a person, but um, I read Normal People yonks ago. Like I, that was year one of uni and I've now graduated. So it was a long time ago and I hated it. Oh my God. Why are we reading about these horrible people who the whole book is just miscommunication for no fucking reason? Just communicate. I hate no, I fucking, ooh, I'm getting outraged. I'm so fucking angry! I hate miscommunication when there's no reason. Like you could have just fixed years of anguish of your life if you'd just spoken. Is that a radical concept? Is speaking, to each other and communicating a radical concept. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't, I hate you normal people. So I'm never gonna pick up another Sally Rooney. Listen, you can see everyone loves her. Like everyone loves her. She doesn't lose any coin. She doesn't lose any sleep at night for me not liking her books. But like, you could actually not pay me to read a Sally Rooney book again. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Okay, we'll end on this. A lot of people have said they enjoy breaking the spine of paperbacks. Now, <laughs> I don't really, I feel like a fake fan of books. A fake fan of books. This whole channel is a lie. What actually constitutes breaking the spine? I don't actually know. Is it when there's creasing? Or is it when the spine has come apart from the book? What? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't care about creasing, right? Some people I've seen like read their paperbacks like this. Like this, so it doesn't creep. This, to be fair, this is the kind of floppy paperback that doesn't really ever crease. But some people like read their more like stiff paperbacks like that, so it doesn't crease. I don't understand. Like, I like creasing. If we're talking about that, I like creasing on the spine. But breaking the spine, I don't think I've ever done that intentionally. So, because I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm a fake book fan. This is, it's, but this channel is a fraud. <laughs> so, wow. there we have it. That is me reacting to your controversial book's opinions. There were so many more, but that was so much fun. I really found it so interesting seeing what you guys said. If you got into the end of the video, comment the emoji with like a sweary mouth. <laughs> <laughs> for the controversial opinions. Comment that if you've gotten to the end. Thank you so much as always for watching this video. I love you so much and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!